Hello, everyone. This is Marshall Giller, Head of Investment Research here at FX Prentice, bringing you the week in focus for the week beginning the 4th of July. This isn't such a busy week on the data front. The main events will be the Reserve Bank of Australia, RBA, meeting on Tuesday, and the U.S. Non-Farm Payrolls, the NFP, on Friday. The week gets off to a quiet start today. Not only are there few indicators out, but also our U.S. markets will be closed for the U.S. Independence Day holiday. Now, sometimes thin markets can mean volatile markets if there's something to move prices. But if there isn't, then thin markets can mean quiet markets too. Uh, tomorrow morning in Asian time, we get two of the main points of the week. Uh, the Kaishin Services and Composite PMIs for China will indicate whether the economy as a whole is slowing or recovering. Then the RBA announces its cash rate. The market expects no change at this meeting, but a cut at the next one in August. This is because the main catalyst for the rate cut in May was the lower than expected inflation rate for the first quarter, announced on 27 April. That suggests they're likely to wait for the second quarter CPI, due out on the 27th of July, before deciding whether to move again. In the absence of any move, attention will focus on the RBA's bias. The June meeting, the RBA made no comment about which way the next move might be. The market will be focused on whether the statement continues that neutral stance or moves to an outright easing bias. The other big item on the agenda is, of course, the non-farm payrolls. Because of the 4th of July holiday, the ADP report will come out on Thursday, not Wednesday as usual. It's expected to show a similar number of jobs created in June as in May. Then Friday's NFP is forecast at 175,000. In other words, the data are expected to show that while the pace of growth in jobs may be slowing, the unusually low May figure was an aberration and doesn't indicate a major change in the trend. On the contrary, many people think the May figure will be revised up sharply. That might revive speculation about a Fed rate hike and would probably be bullish for the dollar. Speaking of the Fed, the minutes of the latest FOMC meeting will be released on Wednesday. They are of less interest than usual, perhaps, uh, given that the unexpected Brexit vote has probably put a rate hike on hold for some time. Nonetheless, they'll, of course, be scrutinized closely. If Chair Yellen's comments are anything to go by, they're likely to have a decidedly dovish tone, which could knock the dollar temporarily. As for U.S. indicators, factory orders on Tuesday and the ISM non-manufacturing index on Wednesday are the only two other major indicators. The features for Europe include German factory orders on Wednesday and industrial production on Thursday. There are a number of important UK indicators, such as the construction PMI today, the financial stability report, and service sector PMI on Tuesday, industrial production on Thursday, and trade on Friday. Will they matter? If they do, that's significant in itself. Uh, probably the market's expecting the Bank of England to ease policy, so any weakness in these indicators may be taken as confirmation that easing is likely and would therefore be a sign to sell sterling. On the other hand, any strength, uh, such as that shown by the manufacturing PMI last week, may be taken as pre-Brexit and therefore not indicative of what's to come. This is Marshall Gittler, Head of Investment Research at FX Primus. Get more market insights on our education pages and turn your trading ideas into action with FX Primus, the safest place to trade.